What's up, y'all? Welcome back to another episode of Point Four, the podcast. Myself, Andre Gadala, my main man, Evan Turner. Yo, yo. We're here at NBA Summer League. Uh, a little quieter today um, because, you know, we live here a little earlier, um, but we got some Wildcat familia in the building. Um, Want to start the introduction by saying uh, this guy was the 2021 Pac 12. Well, y'all got to fix y'all pack. You know, everybody leaving. All right. Uh, <laughs> freshman of the year for the Pac-12 2021-2022 uh, Pac-12 player of the year was able to um, see him last summer and then see his development throughout the season um, my good friend uh, Jack Murphy uh, keep in touch with him and um, what, what coach has been doing uh, coach Tommy has been doing in Arizona has been beautiful um, but the sixth pick in the 2022 NBA draft please welcome Benedict Matherin yes, sir. <laughs> how, how often you uh, people introduce you as Benedict uh, I guess I guess most of the time. Really? Yeah. yeah. I, I, I mean, I tell him so. Oh, I like that. Yeah. It, it, it gives you like an astute type presence. <laughs> it's definitely a pre pretentious yeah. name, that's for sure. Yeah. yeah. No, it's, it sounds like it's got greatness in it. Oh, though. no, for sure. Yeah. Absolutely. Like yeah. Andre Iguodala. For sure. <laughs> yeah, for sure. But, but, I mean, let's just kind of start the conversation off in terms of, you know, it feels like, you know, the West Coast, West Coast guys, if they don't have a crazy type of buzz... Mm -hmm coming out of high school, it's almost like people don't know about you and then you just break out and it's like a storm. Like, who's this guy? He just came out of nowhere. Who's the sixth pick? You know, it's kind of like that. They always had an East Coast bias and the West Coast kind of had to keep up. I guess that might be why UCLA and, and, and USC might be going to the Big Ten. Right? Yeah, that's crazy. But just kind of um, tell us who you are, you know, where you come from, your background, and and if for the folks that don't know you, you know, who who are you and what you stand for? Oh, uh, name Benedict Matherin from Montreal. Uh, started playing basketball when I was six. Mm -hmm. um, my older sister, you know, she's the reason why I started playing. And my older brother, too. Um, I went to, uh, to high school in Mexico City for two oh, wow. years. That's really? The, yeah, NBA Academy. In Mexico City? In Mexico City. Really? I don't think yeah. I heard of that. Man, yeah. that altitude out yeah, there, you was training like a, a beat. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was, I, I mean, was training it was a real killer. Yeah, it was good, for sure. Um, then went to, went to Arizona for two years mm -hmm. and then, uh, here I am today. So kind of talk to us about, you know, your, your background, you know, you're from Montreal. Mm -hmm. Um, what's the population of Montreal? I feel like you should know this. Uh, I'm not really familiar. Oh, to see, it was, it was, it was, <laughs> I don't know where I got this from, but I always felt like I had to know the population of where I'm living. Right. Like, no matter what, like when I was in Tucson, I had to know the population. Yeah. When I was in Philly, I had to know the population, so on and so forth. But Montreal is one of the larger cities in Canada. Right. And, you know, what's that basketball scene like um, growing up? Um, You know, like basketball is probably the second or third sport. Hockey oh, wow. was there. Hockey yeah. is the main yeah, sport. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. I played yeah. hockey for two years, too. You play <laughs> hockey? You play yeah, hockey. Yeah, but I played hockey. Would you know it's the first black GM is the San Jose Sharks. They just hired the first black GM oh, for real? In, in hockey history. That's big time. And that was like two weeks ago, a week ago. Right. It yeah, just happened. Right. That's wow, crazy. wow, wow. Yeah, I mean, I played hockey for two years. Um. Played football for two years, but basketball, you know, was I knew it was the main sport for me. Um, like I said, it wasn't it wasn't the main sport over there, so you know you had to grind to like mm -hmm. to really make it to really make it to uh, I mean the U.S. and stuff. So um, um, that's basically it. To yeah. Be so obviously, you know, you say uh, hockey is the main sport. Your influence is you had your brother and your sister, but how about some of the Canadian-born players that were able to make and have some success? Did you? See, see Steve Nash look up to him. Were you looking at Andrew Wiggins at a certain time and being like, yo, that could be me in a couple of years or right. even, you know what I mean? The, the other, you know, Ke Kelly O'Lennon, the uh, Canadian players have made big splashes on the college and pro pro level. Was right. that something that really got you going? And was like, yo, they can make it. I definitely can make it. For sure. I mean, you know, watching Kelly O'Lennon and Andrew Wiggins, you know, were the type of players. I was yeah. like, you know, if they, if they made, if they made it, I, I can make it too, <laughs> yeah. you know? But um, I feel like especially having like Lou Lou Gensdort, um, yes. Chris Boucher making it. Yeah, 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 Chris Boucher he just got that like, new deal yeah, too. Exactly. Yeah, having Cam Burris as well. I was like, okay, nah, you know, it's yeah. really possible having people from my own town yeah. uh, making it to the league. I was yeah. like, okay, you know, it's really uh, achievable for me too. Yeah. How you feel about uh, you know, just a whole new wave right now? Um, 
Team Canada to trying to, you know, make a splash and qualify for the Olympics, right? right, right. And I've been a big fan, obviously, because I played with Kelly O'Lennox. So right. I, I, I always root for Team Canada besides when they play America. But right. what does that mean? That type of energy, the type of wave you're on right now, you're, you know, one of the biggest names to come out of Canada, you know, Haitian, you know, the sin and everything. What does that right. mean to really, you know, elevate and, you know, keep putting on and keep leading that, that pipeline? Oh, well, I feel like it's great. You know, like you said, you know, me, I'm Haitian Canadian, so I'm like, yeah. so I, you know, I have to represent both of them. Um, I just feel like, you know, Team Canada doing their own thing, like, you know, just trying to uh, qualify for the Olympics is a great thing. You know, um, my goal is to play in the, in the Olympics at least once in one, one of my life, yeah. once, once in my life. So um, I just feel like it's probably one thing I'm really looking forward to play, you know, in Paris. So yeah. it's pretty good. Because I got Shay. You got R.J. Barrett, you got right. Jamal Murray, right. you know, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, Kelly, Andrew. Yeah. I'm always on wigs. He let y'all down last time. Right. Uh, they lost two. Yeah. I forgot who who put them away. Oh, bro, I do remember. I asked Kelly, like, what what were y'all doing? This is a cake. It was ball. one dude putting yeah. them, putting them through. I forgot who it was. It was yeah. one cat that that. Y'all came off to like yeah, Panama Panama yeah. Canal or yeah. something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was like, damn, that's a okay. But, but take us back to you know your uh, your game. You know, talk to me about, you know, who did you watch growing up in NBA or college and if there was somebody you modeled your game after or just kind of give me, a, you know, the synopsis of, you know, your strengths and, and why you feel like you're going to uh, make a splash in the NBA. Because you're a very confident right. player. Yeah. You know, I've gotten to know you a little bit right. um, throughout the past year, but you're a very confident guy. You know, um, you lost your last game in the um, in the tournament and I text you right away like, man, I'm super proud of you. Like, you put the team on your shoulders. Like, right. you took the tough shots. Right. You know, yeah. when we needed a rebound, you got the rebound. Right. You know, you made the plays for your teammates. You did everything you were supposed to do. It just right. didn't come out on the right side of it. So, I just saw that confidence in you and I just want to know, you know, where you got all that from. Oh, um, I mean, it's just confidence comes, you know, I was, I was really a really young kid. I just mm -hmm. never thought Someone was better than me at anything. True story. You yeah. know, so uh, I was always like, I mean, I faced, I faced adversity at a young age. Mm -hmm. That's what really, you know, got me my confidence today. And, uh, you know, living away from uh, my, my home base, you know, Mexico City, I got to grow by myself right. and, you know, take resp responsibilities on my own. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, just me being a confident guy, you know, watching uh, guys growing up, like DeMar DeRozan, you know, was playing for uh, yeah. Toronto. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. These were the kind of plays I, I, yeah. used, to, I used to watch. Um, yeah. Currently, you know, I've been watching a lot of Jalen Brown and mm -hmm. Jimmy Butler. Oh, wow. Yes. Okay. You know, I feel like they're pretty similar players. Okay. And, uh, you know, they're just the way they play defense and offense, their two-way ability mm -hmm. is, you know, one, one, one thing I'm really looking forward to implanting to my game. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, you talk about two-way, you know, ability and uh, obviously a couple of uh, – you had a, a comment that really, you know, ruffled some feathers. I wasn't mad at it because I know, you know, who you are via Dre. But, right. you know, you want to do two-way. You, you ever have any questions or wonder, like, yo, you know, to make good on my promise versus Brian, let me ask a guy that was able to guard him for four or five games right. what he thinks this way he can go. Like, you ever – are you worried about, you know, that next level of physicality because you're already physical. Right. But to get ready for that IQ, the intelligence and everything like that. How are you going to, you know, somewhat prepare, you know, your rookie season? What are your expectations in that regard? Um, you know, I, I mean, I feel like I know I, I won't say I know the NBA already because yeah. you know that, that's that's not true. But um, <laughs> you know, the NBA is pretty physical. You know, like people yeah. are stronger, taller, and yeah. like faster than you. So obviously, I know I know I have a lot of work to do. Yeah. Uh, I'm just I, I, I love learning. I love working. So you know, I'm gonna be I'm gonna, I'm gonna be in the gym. As soon as the summer league ends, you know, I'm going to yeah. just work on some things that, that I'm going to be able to, you know, control and just to implant, like, have an impact already when I'm, you know, when I play my first game. So I'm just looking forward to playing my first NBA game and then, yeah. you know, be on the court. Yeah. Stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, sure. right. mm -hmm. Now, now, talk to me about your weaknesses. You know, what are some things that you've been getting in terms of, you know, you always get the feedback going into the draft. Right. You know, uh, you look like you're going to go here in the draft. Uh, here are the things they like about you. Here are the things they don't like about you. So what were some things that you were hearing? Um, throughout the last, you know, couple months and, you know, how do you feel like you should tackle that? I got my, I have my opinion on how you should, but I just want to hear from you, you know, some things you've been thinking about in terms of how you're going to tackle uh, what they say your weaknesses are. I mean, you know, there's a lot of people who said my weakness was, you know, deep playing defense. Mm -hmm. uh, I feel like, I wouldn't say that, you know, that's 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 a lie. You know, I feel like there were some some points, some moments of the year where I could have, you know, been better on, uh, defensively. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, it's true. I mean, you know, going to the NBA, I know everybody's a good player. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody's been in the league for, you know, for a little moment. And, uh, you know, you're literally competing for a job every day. Right. You know, 
So I feel like, you know, every time I step on the court, I'm, I'm, I'm going to give my 100% every day. I just feel like there's no moments. Like, if you take a moment off, you right. know, it's over. So yeah. I have no chance, like, to, to, to be off one day, you know. Yeah. And, I've had, you know, Evan and I, you can, you can speak to it this as well in terms of, you know, how can he get the most out of himself. And the big thing for me, especially with rookies, is – Try to get tired as fast as possible. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? If you're able to exhaust yourself and just keep pushing through it, game is easy after that. And in defense, defense to me is all effort. You know, mm -hmm. I always get on guys who were um, offensive specialists, offensive juggernauts that mm -hmm. had like a quickness to them and they couldn't play any defense. It was mind boggling. Yeah, yeah, to me. Crazy, yeah. It's like, how are you getting by everybody, but you can't keep anybody in front of you? So for me, defense is always just, it's just that effort. You know what I'm yeah. saying? And having that mindset that I'm going to get a stop. And it's a scores league. So the offensive players always going to have the benefit of the doubt. The referees always going to get them. They say they don't, but, you know, certain guys go to free the line a certain amount of times yeah, a game. Right. They're going to get there every single game. Yeah. And sometimes it's just, you know, a guy had a good night. He got 25. But it's all about making them get the hardest 25 he ever had to get. Mm -hmm. And I think when you just have that mindset and also understanding as a rookie, everyone's good at scoring. So you got to be able to differentiate yourself too. Right. You know what I mean? Like you got Duarte. Who yeah. can fill it up, you know? Um, Tyrese Halliburton. And Tyrese Halliburton. Yeah. Uh, he's going to find you a bit. You yeah, know, he's, yeah, he's, sure. he's got so yeah. many great intangibles. And depending on the rumors with your big, you know, you got a big that can shoot with Turner or uh, the kid from uh, Phoenix as well, uh, uh, DeAndre. Yeah, DeAndre, yeah, DeAndre Ayton. They're talking about yeah. that, might, that trade yeah, that might, might go through. We don't know. Yeah. But, um, you know, you're going to have a big, a solid big. So, you know, you got plenty of talent out there. Every Like, it's a guy you never heard of. Yeah. And he's going to have a good training camp day. You'll be like, who is this dude? Right. You know, but when you start really breaking down the game and you start picking apart other people's games, you're going to realize what they're missing. Like, oh, that's what he's yeah. missing. That's what he's missing. This is what makes him great. That's what makes him great. And then you do the same thing with yourself. And, and this is what I wanted to talk to you about in terms of your weaknesses. You know, there are a lot of guys in the league who have all the talent in the world, but they want to be Kobe Bryant tomorrow. Mm -hmm not understanding it might take them five years to get to Kobe Bryant. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like, you know, I've dealt with plenty of rookies and other guys on other teams I like with all the talent in the world. It's like, he tried to work on his handles. He tried to work on his one-on-one. -on -one, he tried to work on his three. And he tried to work on his post moves all in the same summer. <laughs> and he, he's yeah. only getting better, like, by that much yeah. instead of just one summer, all ball handling. Mm -hmm. Next summer, all mid-range. Next summer, footwork. Next summer, this. And before you know it, you know, guy's 19. By the time he's 24, 25, he's perfected all his areas. And now he's got a complete game. But I think now we're in an instant, instant gratification. We all want to be cool on IG. We take, we try to take the shortcut, which is to get everything at once, which is damn near impossible. You know what I mean? So just keep taking your time. Um, most importantly, have fun. And, you know, Evan, you know, any. No, you told him everything. <laughs> At the end of the day, yeah. when you break it down, the championship guy. You know, obviously how he prepared and everything day in and day out. You seem like you had the right type of mentality. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, he's a hard worker. Yeah, no, he's so a, he's a hard, do, so, every, do everything you got to do. Yeah, so let's go back to, you know, kind of, you know, the adversity. You know, what was it like, you know, um, being in Mexico City by yourself? You know, yeah. did you, did you, it was NBA Mexico, right? Right. So did you have to learn Spanish? Yeah. Oh, that's dope. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had that's to learn dope. Spanish. I mean, I, you know, I went there when I was 16. Okay. Uh, my English was a little bit rough too, so yeah. It, it, yeah, it didn't help. <laughs> so, so how many languages do you speak? No, four. Oh, you speak four languages four, now? Yeah, yeah, no. Okay. Um, you know, I was speaking French and Creole only uh, going oh. to Mexico, so I learned. I mean, Spanish. Is, you know, I learned Spanish, and then my English got a little better. So, gotcha. um, as I went through Ari through Arizona for two years, it got it got way better. But uh, I mean, it, you know, it was it was kind of hard. My first year out there, you know, um, mm -hmm. it was the first year academy. Um, the facility was brand new. Like, the food was not, you know, really good. Yeah. Um, they had no Wi-Fi, so I couldn't play now. Nah, just like... <laughs> oh, no. Nah. You know, but, that's um, all they care about is Wi-Fi. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> nah, but, uh, like, to be honest, like, my second year was, like, really, like, a blessing, you know? Mm -hmm. It really changed my career. Like, the way I was in the gym, the gym was at literally 30-second walk. Okay. Oh, it was, okay. It was 30-second yeah. walk, oh, straight that's what's line. Up. Yeah. yeah, so I was going, like, three times, like, morning, afternoon, and evening. Mm -hmm. It was so close to me. Um, I had food, um... Uh, school you know so i i had mostly everything to just to be yeah. successful yeah so it was it was a great thing for me just to be by myself um for a couple for at least two years you know just uh me me losing my brother like when i was 12 mm. um I feel like it really allowed me to grow right as a young man you know gotcha. I, I, like when i was like really young yeah condolences yeah. that's, that's gotta be yeah, tough sorry. Right? Yeah. yeah now transitioning to arizona you know um who were your top two schools and why did you choose arizona 
My top two schools were Baylor and Arizona. Okay. Um, I was, I was, I was, I was really uh, thinking about going to Baylor. Mm -hmm. And I was like, you know, it's a great fit. Uh, Arizona was was a great fit too. It's just like Baylor had a lot of guards. Yeah, they had yeah. women. They had a lot of guards, but mm -hmm. they were all coming back because of COVID year. Yeah, and so, they, they want to chip too. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, they yeah, yeah, squad. Yeah, they want to give nothing bad. They had yeah, real squad. Yeah, yeah, I apologize, yeah, coach. Y'all really yeah, doing your thing. I, mean, I respect yeah, them. Yeah, yeah, I respect them. Yeah, for sure. So, um, you know, I just feel like it, it would have been really hard for me just to to come and you know have a chance to play. So mm -hmm. I was like, no, nah, I'm gonna go to Arizona. They told me they had a freshman opposition, uh, the and Terry. I'm gonna have mm -hmm. to fight, you know, um, to to get a spot. So you know, I just, I mean, I took the challenge just to go out there, and you know, yeah. it really made me better just going against uh, Dalen every day. Right. You know, yeah. my freshman year and then second year just exploded me and me and Dalen. Yeah. So it was it was for sure a blessing. Yeah, because I'm a big fan of Dalen. I feel like y'all yeah. complimented each other very well. Sure. You know, y'all games didn't clash at all, and, right. and it was... Uh, He's a confident individual yeah, as well. Yeah, like, yeah, I don't yeah. see him hating on any yeah, of Yeah, it was that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a beautiful thing to see. So have, have y'all been able to connect? You know, Dalen just got drafted by the right. uh, Chicago Bulls. Right. You know, he in our city, and I reached out to him, and I got some folks there to make sure he's good. But have y'all yeah. been able to kind of embrace and say, man, we on this journey together, and yeah. that brothership's going to last forever? Yeah, I mean, that's what I told him, right, you know, right before the draft. I said, you know, no matter what happens, you know, like you're my brother for life. Like, yeah, you know, yeah. we went through this freshman year. We still battle, like really battle. Like, yeah, you know, <laughs> that's how it's supposed um, to be. Yeah. Battle every every day, um, and we made we made each other better every single day. So you know, it was it was like I said, you know, I relation I, I have a relationship with him. I, I don't have with you know most of my teammates. You know, so uh, no one can really relate to what to what we're like what we what we've yeah. been through. Mm -hmm. So I just feel like. Uh, the situation, the relationship between me and him, is just like something else. Like, mm -hmm. you know, if he has something you need, you need, you want to tell me, like, yes, you sir. know, he can call me, whatever. Yes, sir. And uh, yeah, I just still told him when we play against him, he's going down. You know? <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna see him a lot. Yeah, man, for sure. uh, they're in the same, they're in the they same, same division. Yeah. It's gonna be yeah. Chicago's a beautiful city. That central division is a little. Yeah. The Central Division, yeah. the Central the division, division has division. the worst scenery in terms of cities. <laughs> oh my, yeah. it's gray on gray on gray on gray. Milwaukee, so. right. Indy, Detroit. Chicago and Cleveland. <laughs> you love you talk about Cleveland last night though. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I personally like it, but yeah, but so in college, obviously, um, me and Dre were talking. You were able to embark on something we weren't able to embark on, which was the NIL. Mm -hmm. Right. So you know, discuss with us how cool that was, and you know, obviously, were you able to benefit well from it, and you know, how did it teach you, you know, the business savvy right now to come in? Obviously, you have a lot of you know endorsement deals and everything mm -hmm. else like that. Mm -hmm. Right. To be to be honest, me, you know, I'm a Canadian, so yeah. I so I couldn't really benefit from it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, no. You know, my That's visas, wild. student That's visa, wild. yeah, it was bad. I mean, you know, oh, I, I I guess I got some, I got some some pockets, you know, pocket money. Yeah. Uh, like with deals, like you know, I think we got money because like some people use our like pictures. Yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. Event. So I mean, I got a little bit of money, but yeah, I wish I could make a lot of money. <laughs> but, uh, no, I mean, but we just talking in terms of we have a lot of conversations about business on right. the show. You know, we call it guns and butter, you know, the, you know, assets and liabilities. So, you know, what was your first, what ha, what deals have you been able to get done thus far, you know, just being freshly drafted to the league? Um, no, one, I think one of uh, the main, the biggest deal I've had was the, the trading card deal. Okay. You know, I've had that. Most of the rookies have that. Um, I, I've had a couple more. Um, the Axe deal. Oh, nice. You know, okay. I got, I got cool. yeah. Yeah, so how yeah, have you been that. able to, how have you taken the approach of learning business, understanding, you know, your brand, your value, yeah. you know, how can you differentiate yourself as an athlete and, you know, how people see you as an NBA player? Like, how have you thought about that or how have you talked to your agent about it? You know, I mean, me and me, me and my agent, you know, spoke about it a little bit. Uh, obviously, I'm, I'm a rookie going to the NBA. So I might, I have all the eyes on me right now. Mm -hmm. Everybody wants to, you know, wants to yeah. deal with me. Correct. It might not be the same thing in three years, you know, mm -hmm. uh, it might be. Mm -hmm. So I'll just, you know, take advantage of the situation right now. Mm -hmm. um, just being smart with my money, you know, like I don't want to use my rookie contract. I don't want to spend no money from it. Right. I'm going to use the money I have for my, you know, from all the deals I have right now for, you know, for the first four years. Um, I mean, I, I I love to invest. You know, me and my agent, we spoke about investing yeah. in things. Uh, mm -hmm. My my, fin my financial advisor too. Mm -hmm. you know, yeah, I yeah. want I want to buy a building mm -hmm. uh, in Montreal. Mm -hmm. and, you know, and stuff like that. So I'm I'm just really like growing Smart. right now, yeah. growing up in uh, the business game. I, I would say, don't be afraid to continue to learn. I think that's yeah. the biggest thing. And yeah. I think the biggest part of that is and not being afraid to say I don't know. 
or I don't have the answer. And right. then just take it upon yourself to go get the answer. Say, oh, okay, I don't know that. All right, I'm going to take an internship. All right, I'm going to pick up a book. All right, I'm going to learn about this space. And um, continuing on with the business thing, uh, you signed your shoe contract. No, yeah. Oh, you haven't yet. signed it yet? No, oh, okay, it, okay, it, okay. Yeah, okay. it's coming okay. soon. It's coming yeah. soon. It's coming okay, soon. Okay, so, all right. But, uh, yeah, I mean, stay tuned. It's going to yeah. be really soon. So, so I guess, you know, I'm a little removed from the landscape, but what's the what's the landscape night like with shoe contracts? You know, are, are players looking to, uh, you know, go with Nike? Are players looking to go to, you know, a China company like Anto or Li Ning? Or, you know, kind of what's the... Uh, what what do what do young players in the league now look for with a shoe company? Because when I came in the league, or when we came in the league, that yeah. was a pretty big deal. Like mm. you know, ET did a, a one of a kind deal mm. uh, with Lee Ning, mm. um, and it kind of you know he was like the jumpstart of it. And then uh, with D Wade came right after yeah, that. D Wade, he had a big deal. And I see a lot of guys, C.J. McCollum, yeah, yeah, you got to sign a big deal. So kind of what's the landscape of, of the shoe contracts for you guys? Oh, I feel like you know. The generation right now, everybody wants to play with Kobe's. You know, yeah, everybody true. loves Kobe's. Yeah, true. But uh, you know, I feel like some some players wants to play with Nike, obviously, because mm-hmm. you know, growing up, that's that's all they were wearing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but some other players also like they've had more experience, like me. You know, I played with uh, Jordans before, Nike, Adidas, yeah. and mm-hmm. some other stuff. So I, I got I, I was able to, to to see all them brands and you know see see what see what see what see what's what was the best option for me, mm-hmm. obviously. Um, some companies throw more money than right. some other companies. Right. Um, but I feel like, you know, players are smart enough just to take the company that, you know, they, re- they feel comfortable playing on the court. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So back to the court, you know, Rick, La- Rick Carlisle um, is, is known as one of the smarter coaches, you right. know, NBA, one of the best coaches in the league. You know, he's very, uh, what's the word I got for him? He's an exquisite type of guy. I've seen him play the piano. He did some little Mozart at uh, right, he fly planes too. Yeah, yeah, when he oh he, he, he oh, played he the flute. Planes, yeah. Oh so wow! He <laughs> sat in front of you and did the <laughs> no no. <laughs> All right, bet Rick. <laughs> yeah, I seen Rick crash a wedding on the piano. <laughs> really? Right man, yeah, I never, it. I never, I never wanted to tell this story, but my man's wedding was just on point and it was smooth, and my man just came out of nowhere and said, "Oh, give me a second now." I'm going to play a uh, rendition. <laughs> and that man went on a five-minute, ten-minute joint, and my wife was really, like, really close friends with the bride. Okay. And my, you know, my wife is. She's quiet. She was not a happy camper. No? She's like, you know, you know, I'm married to a black woman. Yeah. <laughs> she wasn't going, fam. I know he just did. I know he just did. I know he just didn't. So <laughs> the funny part is he halfway between his set. We don't know it's halfway between, but he's doing his set. And he just little pause. My wife start clapping on purpose to wrap it up. <laughs> <Start> <laughs> <clapping> <laughs> <laughs> going I'm going to keep the party going, but he kept playing. Right? Bro, that's crazy. <laughs> and then she looking at the bride like, was this playing? The bride was like, uh-uh. <laughs> so it was it was funny, but I mean, it was a beautiful little joint he played, yeah. but you know, that's just Rick. You know, he look, yeah. they say he's quirky, but you know, I respect him as a basketball mind, obviously winning that the chip that chip in um yeah, right. in Dallas. And then what he even did before that in Indy. Yeah. And uh understand. then him being back in Indy, I think you right. you know, he's the type of coach where he loves teaching. Right. Just embrace him. You know, uh no coach is perfect. You know, you're gonna have some things you might not agree with him with. But right. uh-huh. you know, I think he's established in this league to where, you know, you can kind of trust his word. And then sure. if, yeah. you know, maybe if it's some things that you want to be doing on the court and you may not be able to as fast as you would like to just work on that on the side, you know, yeah. but you know, most importantly, just stay locked in with the team, what they're trying to do. And don't, I mean, and keep the arguments down until you get enough to get them fired. All right. <laughs> that's, how they, that's how they screw us over. You know what I mean? So make sure until you're averaging 22 or 23, just yes, sir. No, sir. All right. right. Sure. Now, now I, I do want to, you know, we got to mention this, you know, cause you made some big statements, you know, in yeah. terms of, and you know what I'm talking about, yeah. you know, what uh, possessed you to say that, um, LeBron gonna have to show you how good he really is. I like the confidence yeah. part though. But was it taking out of confidence or, or it, walk me through? No, uh, it's just the words, the way you know it was phrased. Like I said, you know, I'm a rookie coming to the league. Right. You know, I don't want to say anybody's better than me. Mm-hmm. You know, so it was just me a way of saying like, you know, I want to go out there and play against one of the greatest, already greatest player of mm-hmm. all time. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm not, I'm not scared from anybody. For sure. I just want to go out there and see how great he is for myself. Mm-hmm. So it, were, it was nothing personal. I know yeah. a day that I, I said on media already and the people were coming at me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, it, it was a great thing. You know, I just felt like uh, uh, 
now I know how you know the media gonna form yeah. their own yeah, words bingo. and stuff. For yeah, sure, yeah, so. bingo. Yeah. yeah. And quiet as it's kept, man. I ain't trying to like gym, like give you gems or anything like yeah. that. But that's the right type of confidence to have. Yeah. Yes, and um, obviously Brian's unbelievable, but in order to compete, we're all doing a job. And the right. only way to show him respect is by trying to kick for his sure, ass. You sure. know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So it's the right confidence to have. In the same way, don't let take a go a, a step further and let a nerdy nerdy media dude yeah. <laughs> try to kill i'm being serious try to kill yeah. your confidence 100%. Like, he don't know sure. shit only thing that you know like know what you know yeah. when did you leave school you left school or left the crib at 16 to go do what yeah. chase his mission exactly that's the only thing that matters yeah. so like they don't know shit about what you did yeah. and vice versa just know you're ready and prepared to do it so sure. make sure they don't kill that because at the end of the day that's all you really got yeah you know what i mean you're right well let's turn the tables you know is there is what are you looking forward to or what are some things you haven't seen yet that you would, you know, like to know more about? Like, you know, questions for us, you know, mm -hmm. what what are things that, you know, it could be anything, you know, road life, yeah. you know what I mean? <laughs> the road life can get crazy, yeah. you know, uh, they're going to get that that talk. We ain't lose to the Lakers. We lost to the city of Los Angeles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But what kind of, uh, so what are some things that you're, you know, you, you're really looking forward to uh, when the season starts? Um... You know, just pretty much uh, going to the NBA, like I said, like it's always been a dream of mine, like all you guys, you right. know. Um, just just tell me about, you know, the NBA coming as a rookie. Like I said, I'm really confident guy, you know, like the, the thing you said about like Kobe Bryant, you know, it takes a little while. Like I want to be Kobe the next day. No, no, but, you know, I do, un I do understand, you know, it, take, it takes a while. Yeah. Um, just, how you, just how you, you know, take your time and, you know, trust the process basically as a rookie coming in. And and I was just giving him, you know, I never forget this first game against Kobe in LA. You know, oh, I remember that. Yeah, I do remember that. <laughs> that was a good night for me. You did play key, well. It's just Kobe. You played yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You played really well. Yeah, nobody Kobe, told me Kobe like that. Was just Kobe. Yeah, nobody told me that. But he had the same type of confidence as you had. You know, what I mean, he was like, I'm really like that. You know, and and he was right in feeling the way he felt. Like he was, or he's a real. You two are real hoopers. You mm -hmm. know, you know the difference between you know guys who got their skill set in order and then guys who say, all right, it's talented. They got to get their skill set in order with their physical mm -hmm. physical attributes. Well, you got both. And he was the same way. So he was just saying like, man, that man going to have to respect me. Mm -hmm. Y'all want me to get Kobe out of respect. <laughs> Kobe got to respect yeah. me. I'm like, yeah, yeah. I, I want you to feel like that. But <laughs> I also want you to know this dude really different. Yeah, yeah, you got to be. And he was like, all right, I'm going to see. And then he came out of the game. He was like, yeah. man, that dude really good. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. And, 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 right. and, and that's, and to be honest with you, I always say, like, the difference between, I think, like, good rookies that come in and, you know, good rookies that take their time to find a way, and it's literally having their ears open to listen. Right. Because you're not going into college or high school. You're going into a league with 400 of the top players in the world. Well, yeah. So you sit there. It's like, man, if the old head in the corner is like, guard him this way or do this. Like, he's seen so many things a million times. Mm -hmm. He's played a million minutes first worth of basketball. And he's literally at every level. You're mm -hmm. looking at an expert. Mm -hmm. Like, an expert right. in the game. So right. I think that's just one thing, once again, it's like comprehending, like, come in, be confident and everything like that. But comprehend all these people can play. Yeah, and, everybody can and, play. And, and the best players are consistent. You yeah. know, Dre, what he did for years in and years, I was unbelievable. You have people sometimes where I always struggle with consistency of being like playing, you know, three good games, but the best players are consistent every 82 games, like every, every single game. So. Right. If you get to that level, you're elite. I never did, but <laughs> this no, dude, no. Yeah. he got you got to that level. No, no, no. Yeah, but yeah. I mean, like that elite, the elite where he wants to go, the Kobe's, right. uh, the, the Browns, and everything. Mm -hmm. sure. Yeah, I think it's just finding a good vet too. You know, and that's probably the hardest thing. Yeah. The vet isn't as valuable as it used to be, but you know, the coaching staff, it'll probably have a former player. You you'll find a good vet there, mm -hmm. or you know, a good vet on the team. Um, you know, enjoy the enjoy the time too, man. Like that's you here. You might as well enjoy it, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And yeah, uh, you know, we never know what to, what lies tomorrow, you know. So why not just embrace it? And number one thing is you already got is just keep just spending time in that gym, man. For Stay sure. in that gym. If you embrace and have fun in that gym, you know everything else is gonna be sweet, man. But just um, I think being a good teammate too, yeah. like you know that matters. Yeah, that right. matters, man. Yeah. And, and then identifying uh, a bad teammate and and not you know causing any division, but being like. Why is that guy a bad teammate? And, right. and say to yourself, I never want to be like that. Yeah, right. And then you can always lean on me, you know, ET. Right. We always gonna be here, but you know, um, you got that that it factor in terms of yeah. you want you here to hoop, you know, right. you understand like, all right, you actually love the game. Mm -hmm. And you're gonna see most guys who are so talented don't love the game, and that's really what's holding them back. Right. So just having that passion and love for the game, everything can take care of itself. 
For sure. And then you got to get your ass busted a few nights too. Yeah. <laughs> like it's going to happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like for some reason, he think he can beat me one on one. Nah, you can't. You got to go through him to get to me too. So, <laughs> so, so like, I'm going to look my way. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I already know. No, but I already know you nice, obviously. But yeah. man, once again, I think one thing that occurs too that a, a lot of dudes don't don't turn to one of them NBA players where it's like, man, that ain't my problem. Like this ain't my problem. That ain't my problem. Because when it gets deep down or whatever, you're really going to war with people that you're seeing more than your family. Yeah. And I think like sometimes if you expect like a lot of effort from the people, you insert that effort as well, mm. and don't get back like this ain't my problem. Like you're still a human. You still. A person, bro. The best right. part of you is your character and moral morale and what you can put into other people. So when all that bread and other shit come and which it will come, keep your moral compass because how you're working and where you want to go, not only will you be able to change your life's future, but you'll be opening doors for Canadian youth, yeah. the Haitian youth, everything sure. like that. So take great pride mm -hmm. in that because it's a blessing, bro. And what right. you're doing is unbelievable. So congrats. Sure. Appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, we appreciate y'all checking in. Uh, another episode of Point Forward Podcast. <laughs> appreciate y'all checking in, man. Uh, my man, Benedict Matherin. Look for him doing big things with Indiana Pacers. And um, I think you're going you're gonna to do some great things, man. Put, you know, putting that, that market on a, on a map. It's a real basketball market. It's real basketball friends right. in Indy, too. So just yeah. embrace it all. And uh, we appreciate y'all for chiming in. Until next time. Yeah.